In the studio for this week's Your Health segment is Dr. Claire Frazier, professor of medicine and director of the Institute for Genome Sciences at the University of Maryland School of Medicine. Doctor, thank you for being with us. I'm delighted to be here. We are going to talk about the gut microbiome. Didn't know I had one of those. What, what is it? You do. Your gut microbiome is the collection of the trillions of microorganisms that live within your GI tract. Um, it's estimated that um, there are probably 10 times the number of microbes that we each carry around with us than there are human cells. They're with us from the day we're born until the day we die. And some really exciting research from the past 10 years is beginning to shed some new light on the roles that these microbes play in maintaining health and, and perhaps also in um, being associated with various diseases. Why are they there in the first place? Well, that's an interesting question. I think we believe that they co-evolved with us from the time that uh, humans first arose. In fact, you, you can look at almost any species of life on Earth and find associated microbes. They've evolved to carry out some important functions. They help us to digest our food. They synthesize vitamins. They help to educate and maintain our immune system. And one of the most important roles is to probably protect us from disease. So if we didn't have all of these bacteria, if somebody were totally sterile somehow, it, it wouldn't work? We wouldn't be as healthy as we are. It's interesting, there are some germ-free mouse models where, where there's a lot of work that's been done and that's provided some interesting information to help us try and figure out what these microbes do. These germ-free mice, they're alive, but I wouldn't say that they're healthy. So what, what have you learned in recent years about the microbiome, the, the signaling that goes back and forth, perhaps? Well, I think, I think one way to think about this is to consider us and our associated microbial partners as an ecosystem. And if you were asked somebody to think about an ecosystem, they'd probably think of the rainforest or a coral reef. But all those same principles are at work within our bodies. These communities represent interdependent organisms. They work together to make us healthy. They signal to us, we signal to them. And like any ecosystem, it's um, very possible for, for this to get out of balance. When you walk down the yogurt aisle in the grocery store, there's stuff that says it has probiotics. Mm -hmm. Is that related? It is related. Um, Probiotic organisms originated from the GI tract. Um, their primary use in foods is to ferment milk, to turn milk into yogurt, but it's also thought that at least certain probiotic organisms that can survive transit through the harsh conditions in the stomach and the small intestine also play beneficial roles in promoting health. So that didn't sound like a total endorsement or, or saying that you should stay away from this. Well, well, actually, that's not true because a big part of my research program is, is trying to apply current state-of-the-art methods to better understand whether and how probiotics have an effect. Uh, probiotics have been around for hundreds of years. They've been studied for a long time, but I wouldn't say that the science behind probiotics is particularly strong. But we have a new set of tools, and there seems to be a renewed interest in looking at probiotics in the context of the microbiome today. What's the most exciting uh, area of research at the moment? Well, I think in, in the probiotic field, we're starting to see that these probiotics can work a couple of different ways. They can um, benefit us directly, but they can also have effects by modulating the activity of all the resident microbes that live in our GI tract. Another important insight that has come just recently is the idea, not surprisingly, that no single probiotic will have the same effect in everybody. It's not really what food companies want to hear, but for us as consumers, if we can figure out that probiotic X will do a better job for us than probiotic Y, then we can be a little bit more um, confident that when we go and we purchase these kinds of foods that we're really spending our money wisely. Let's take a phone call. Uh, Anne Arundel County, this is George. George, thank you for the call. Go ahead. Thank you. Hey, I'm wondering, since uh, there's good and bad bacteria, uh, whether they're easily um, differentiated, let's say, by a, in a microscope, and how they look different from each other. Um, interesting question. It's not so easy to distinguish good from bad bacteria 
in the microscope, but we can certainly um, do that with, much, with a much higher degree of resolution with current molecular and genomics techniques. Is there a connection between the bacteria and somebody's weight? Is there yeah. a potential weight loss silver bullet in here somewhere? It's, it's a really interesting question, and I think it's probably a topic in the microbiome field that has generated more interest on the part of the public than anything that I've seen. This idea that our gut microbes could be linked to weight came out of some fantastic studies from Dr. Jeff Gordon's lab at um, Washington University in St. Louis about 10 years ago. He began his work looking at mice and, and demonstrated that there were different sets of microbes in obese mice versus lean mice. Um, studies in mice don't always translate readily to studies in humans, and I would say the results in humans have been mixed, and it's not for lack of trying to find a connection. But I think the jury's still out on whether and how gut microbes may influence body weight. But obesity is a, is a complex disorder. It involves genetics and environment, and, and I think it's unrealistic to believe that we're going to find a simple, single solution. Let's take a phone call, Baltimore City. This is Mary. Mary, thank you for the call. Go ahead. Oh, um, hey, you know, you always hear about uh, how E. coli um, can be dangerous on, like, raw chicken and stuff. But I thought that, um, I thought e. Coli, e. coli also was like one of the major important um, bacteria in our gut. So Mary, great question. On it? Thank you. That is, that is a great question, Mary. And you're absolutely right. Um, e. coli can be one of the most dangerous sources of food poisoning, but it's also found as a typical resident in the GI tract. And, um, this inconsistency can be explained by the fact that there are many, many different strains of E. coli. Some of them are more likely to cause disease than others. So the E. coli that typically live in the human GI tract um, doesn't necessarily cause disease, but E. coli are everywhere, and they can pick up all sorts of genes that can turn a fairly harmless E. coli into um, a, a dangerous uh, food or waterborne pathogen. What happens when we take antibiotics? Oh. Somebody say they have a legitimate uh, infection, bacterial infection, they take a round of strong antibiotics, the microbiome must be affected. Yeah, another great question, and I think this is one of the most important um, insights to come from our study of the microbiome. I think it's important just to make clear that everybody understands that when antibiotics are medically indicated for treating a bacterial infection, there's, there's, they're absolutely essential. But we are exposed to unnecessary antibiotics, either when we go to the doctor and, and ask for a prescription at the first sign of an upper respiratory infection. We're also exposed to lots of antibiotics in our food supply. And antibiotics, in the context of the microbiome, are probably equivalent to dropping a nuclear bomb. Every time we're exposed to antibiotics, not only do we kill off the disease-causing bacteria, but we have an impact on these beneficial bacteria. Now, I go eat some yogurt at that point. Does that help at all? It, it certainly helps, but it's not necessarily going to restore your microbiome to what it was prior to taking the antibiotic. And again, going back to this notion of ecosystems, ecosystems can sustain certain assaults, but there can come a time with an ecosystem where you can have a straw that breaks the camel's back scenario. And unfortunately, we don't know when that's likely to occur. So we, we I think probably the, the best advice when it comes to antibiotics is avoid them unless absolutely necessary. Dr. Claire Frazier with the University of Maryland School of Medicine, thank you very much. Thank you. Your health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System.